For the last couple weeks, it seems like TNA has been alternating between delivering shows that feel like they belong on the UK tour and shows that feel like just any other show. One week you'll get an impact that feels like it had some extra effort put into it that has moments that could only happen on the UK tour, making the show feel like the special event it's supposed to be, and the next you'll get something that feels more like a regular impact. I don't know why this is, but it's kind of been a roller coaster going up, down, up, down. Last week's show I thought was lacking some things. This week, if you were looking for a show that felt like TNA wanted to deliver something special and send the UK fans home happy, you were probably a lot more satisfied. Once again, we had those memorable moments, those things that stay with you after the show is over, things that make you remember why we, as fans, are supposed to look forward to this tour every year. We get Drew Galloway's first promo, and this, I thought, was one of the better jobs TNA have done with introducing a new talent in the last few years. The BDC call him out, and he shows up in the crowd, making him feel different and stand out from everyone else in the locker room. That's good. And he cuts a really good promo, taking all the obligatory pot shots at WWE like you expect former WWE guys to do, I guess. He gets his character over with this voice of the people gimmick. Insert CM Punk joke here. You have a vagina! It's not that dissimilar from a lot of other gimmicks we've seen, but the promo is well delivered and the crowd eats it up, so we can give this a check in the win column. The following match was slightly less interesting. Galloway vs. Kenny King wasn't bad, really, but I was expecting more out of it for some reason. I don't know if there was a clash in styles or what, but this felt kind of clunky to me at times. It was slow-paced, there wasn't as much intensity from Galloway as you might think. Something felt off about it, and I'm not sure why. Nevertheless, he did get put over nicely, the character comes across very well, they gave him the star treatment with the promo on the BDC, and him being a UK wrestler debuting in the UK, the fans were very receptive to him, so I'd say Galloway's off to a good start. Another special moment, Bram beats Matt Hardy and is about to do a lot worse to him, and then Magnus finally shows up. Yeah! Alright, the first UK wrestler to ever become a world champion actually appearing on the UK tour, imagine that! I still question whether keeping him off the first couple shows of the tour was the right way to go, but they did use that time well in putting heat on Bram. So when Magnus does show up, it means something. Magnus never feels like a bigger star than when they're in the UK, and you can really feel that even watching at home. This feels so much more like the character that Magnus should be. Not jobbing to Tommy Dreamer, not being somebody's sidekick, but presented as a legit star. And his promo on Bram was terrific. It was fiery, intense, it was everything it needed to be. Already it feels like we've gotten the ball rolling on rebuilding Magnus's character after the last year for him was, well, hit and miss. Booked the right way, I think a feud with Bram could do a lot to help reestablish this guy. I just hope they don't muck it up like they did with his world title reign, fingers crossed. And the moments keep on coming. We get the best promo segment of the night with EC3 and Rockstar Spud, another UK guy. This has been easily the most engaging feud on the show for the last few months, and now we finally see it building to a climax where one guy is going to get their head shaved next week. It's not the most earth-shattering stipulation, but they've made it more a matter of humiliation and respect. And with these two characters, that works. They both nailed their promos, they built the story up just right to the point where it feels like it's time to pay this off, the audience is ready to see Spud finally get over on this guy, and if Spud wins that match and becomes the first man to beat EC3, you know, I don't think it would be a bad idea. The time and place feel right for it. Now, of course, it's all just a fantasy. Anyone, let alone Rockstar Spud pinning our Lord of Wrestling would never happen in a million years. But the writers have got a lot of people wanting it to happen here. Personally, I think Spud deserves to be that guy, and there'd be no better time for him to do it than on the Maximum Impact Tour. Hell, if he did beat EC3 and shaved his head next week, that UK crowd would come unglued. Rockstar Spud is in the building! We got a cool moment from the knockouts, too. Gail and Kong finally come to blows. First time these two have touched since 2008, and they teased it enough prior to this that it felt really special when they went at it. You know, sure, they ruined it by cutting away from the segment almost immediately. That was asinine. But... It still happened, so it, it counts. Sort of. You put all these moments together, and they add up to something that feels out of the ordinary, like a show you don't get very often. 
It comes off as something more than just a regular impact. It feels special, and that means that the show did its job. Something else that helped the show a lot was the wrestling quality, though I'm mainly talking about three matches specifically here. Kong and Terran Terrell had their first match. Not shockingly, we get a non-finish, but you don't want to give that away too soon. This was more about just testing the waters. If this triple threat feud is going to work, Terran needs to be able to match up well with Kong, and I think the results were pretty good. They were obviously holding back in this match, but I felt optimistic by what I saw here. I think Terran has the physical tools to be able to put up a fight against Kong believably. I don't know if they're going to have the same chemistry that Kong and Gale have, but they might not need to. You put Gale in there with them to grease the wheels a little bit, and I think this could be something really good. Now, ultimately, I do think this feud needs to be about putting over Terran, because Gale and Kong ain't getting any younger. But if that's the goal here, then I like that she's starting out as an underdog, because if she's going to really prove herself, she needs a big mountain to climb. And Kong and Gale can certainly be that. The match of the night was the tag title match with the Wolves and the Revolution, both because of the quality of the match and because we got some welcome course correcting here. You know, sure, there were tons of shenanigans and chaos going on, and it could have turned into a giant schmoz real easily, but it didn't. You know, Davey and Eddie held everything together, and when they were hitting suicide dives all over the damn place, I started to enjoy all the chaos. This was one of those rare occasions when the overbooking actually added to the match. And I'm very happy about the title change. Storm and Abyss as the tag team champions was not working for me. I still think Abyss and the Revolution is stupid. It doesn't fit at all. It should have been Manic and Sonata with the titles. That would have made so much more sense. And if they have to keep the Revolution in the tag title hunt, let it be those two who do it. Aside from that, an exciting match, a really fun segment, big thumbs up. But then we get to the major problem with this impact. And I think you know where I'm going with this. The main event, Rude, EY, Angle for the number one contendership. The match was very good. They did a fair job hyping it with video packages. I didn't care for the promo segment, but that didn't matter. In the end, none of it mattered. Because when the network, in their infinite wisdom, decided to air a commercial advertising Angle vs. Lashley for the World Championship next week, over an hour before Angle won the number one contenders match, the match itself, and anything they did to hype it became completely irrelevant to me. Suspension of disbelief went right down the crapper. I ceased to give a shit at that point, and I don't think I'm the only one. How on earth... How in the bluest of blue hells does something like this happen? During the show, I actually received a DM on Twitter about this from someone who works for TNA. I'm not going to say who, just for privacy reasons. But apparently, this was something that some brain trust of the network took it upon themselves to do, and TNA wasn't happy about it either. Okay, but... For God's sake, get on the phone to the Destination America Promotional Department and tell them to pay some damn attention to what they're doing! This is something that should never, ever happen. And quite frankly, the company and the network got embarrassed here. Stupid! You're so stupid! Whatever idiot ran that commercial took this show down a peg. Might not have been TNA's fault, but that's what happened. And that's really unfortunate because this was the best show of the UK tour so far, in my opinion. And taking that commercial out of the equation, it was still a good show. We had a bunch of memorable things happen, some good matches, storyline progression, a very solid show overall. Just talk to the network. Tell them to think for a minute before they air those commercials next time. Over. Out.